thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Now, I'm reading from uh, Matthew, the sixth chapter, verses 9 and 10. After this manner, therefore pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's pray and ask the Lord to preach to us this morning. Praise God. <clears throat> and the thing that the Lord has been talking to me this morning and last night and tomorrow, yesterday, about is this one little statement. Thy will be done as in heaven, so in earth. Praise God. Somehow this morning... <clears throat> I pray before I get through this morning that I bring to our understanding that when we got saved, we didn't just join the church. When you go around the country here, <clears throat> some folks say, what church do you belong to? Praise God. And you could say, well, I belong to this church or that church or any other church. <clears throat> but are you in the kingdom of God this morning? It's not the title or the shingle out in front of the church. Where are you at this morning? Praise God. And I have an awful bad habit of trying to stay in a spiritual place and a spiritual realm. Because I see so many folks today who would dilute us who would make us uh, something God doesn't want us to be. I asked my wife yesterday. She said she went to the class. She didn't see anything that shouldn't be. But I said, why did they name that class Color Me Beautiful? Why didn't they name that class Color Me Holy? Is it in the heart? Now, I don't think there's anything wrong for a woman to come to church dressed as nice as she knows how. Fact is, if there's anywhere a woman ought to come dressed as nice as she knows how, it's to church. Because she's coming before God. If she thinks she's just coming down here to see all the people on the pew and the preacher, something hasn't entered into her yet. She hadn't realized she's going to Zion. Neither has the man, if that's what he thinks. Amen. When you go to Zion, you're going to the highest place God's ever brought man. Or woman. Since some don't seem to have the ability to distinguish between. Amen. And I think that you should be dressed as nice as you can when you come there. Your hair should be up. It shouldn't look like they jerked you out of the dryer and brought you to church. Amen. Hallelujah. I can tell by looking that some of you women looked in the mirror this morning and got mad and didn't do a whole lot about it. 
Amen. It's a whole lot easier to be lazy than it is to do something. Amen. Woo, it's quiet in here. You can tell the same way about looking at some men. They don't care whether their clothes are ironed or not. Look like they got out of bed in their suits and shirts and things and come to church. Amen. I don't believe we ought to come to church that way. I believe we're coming to the house of God. We're coming to Mount Zion. Amen. Praise God. But uh, <clears throat> there are there are more reasons why we do these things than just looking at the external. The reason we do these things is because we don't feel very eternal. If we felt very eternal, we'd be close to God. And there are some things when you're eternal that I never come to church wondering how you're looking at me. But I come to church wondering how he's looking at me this morning. What's he thinking about me this morning? As I come to present myself before him this morning, how is he looking upon me this morning? Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so Jesus said, when you pray, say, thy will be done. Really what he's saying is, thy will be done in earth as her will is done in heaven. Now there's one thing that is done always, consistently, on time and right, is his will in heaven. And if he wasn't dealing with us weak, fleshly-minded human beings, it'd be done more often on earth. Hallelujah. Now, <clears throat> David begins to tell us some things of how that it should be done in Psalms 103. We begin to read that God, if you get into a spiritual place, God will show you his will on earth for you in life. How many of you want God's perfect will in your life? How many of you want God's permissive will in your life? Well, I don't think some of you know the difference. The permissive will of God in your life <clears throat> is a life of chaos, and frustration, and trouble trying to have your own way. That's God's permissive will. God's perfect will in your life is a life of joy and peace and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Now, when you are in the permissive will of God, you're having your way about things. Things aren't going right, but you're having your way anyhow. Amen. And you say, I'm saved because I've been baptized in Jesus' name because I've been filled with the Holy Ghost. But you think all the time that because you're living for God, things ought to be better than this. And the reason is because you're living in the permissive will of God and not the perfect will of God. Praise God. It would be better if you would do one thing, become like the angels. When God speaks, the angels don't say, oh, 
I would go and do that today, but I've got my uh, family to take care of today. We're going to have a family reunion today. Man, it's quiet in here. I probably ought to go home. <clears throat> when God speaks, you don't say, but Lord, I promised the kids that I'd take them to the park today and swing them. I promised the kids I was going to take them horseback riding today. Hello. Now, God, you know I just got the motor fixed on my boat yesterday and the fish are biting. Well, Lord, I, I'd like to uh, do what you want me to do today, but they have a phenomenal sale at Walmart this weekend, and uh, I've got to get down there in that sale or I'll miss everything. Everybody will get everything before I get there. Praise God. Hallelujah. There are not very many people smiling in here this morning. Praise God. I don't know what you folks ate for breakfast, but please promise me before you come to church next Sunday, you won't eat that. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, if you say, well, how, what is he talking about? Here it is before your very eyes in Psalms 103. Verses 18 begins to tell you how it is. To such as keep his covenant and to those that remember his commandments to do them. There are all kinds of people today who tell you you don't have to do them. They are not worried about the kingdom of heaven. They are worried about their own kingdom. You don't have to do this to be saved. You don't have to do that to be saved. You know, it goes farther than being baptized in Jesus' name and being filled with the Holy Ghost. What if God told you to do something today? What if God told you something to do today? And somebody in the church says, oh, you don't have to do that today. Hello, who are we living for? Who are we living for? Who are we living unto this morning? Who is the king of our life? Who rules us? Hallelujah. I bet you wished I was getting back on the book of Acts this morning. I'm just doing exactly what God told me to do this morning. Praise God. Amen. To such as keep his covenant. That's his statutes and laws in this book. To those that remember his commandments to do them. The Lord has prepared his throne in the heavens. The Lord has prepared his thrones in the heaven. When you come to his thrones in the heaven, you will never have your way. You will never have your way when you come to his throne in the heavens. By the time you get to his throne in the heaven, he has already prepared his thrones in the heaven. And by the time you get to his thrones in the heavens, you will find out that you either was obedient or disobedient. You'll find out that you're judged unto holiness and righteousness or unto iniquity and sin. to disobedience or to obedience. He has already prepared his thrones 
in the heaven. And his kingdom ruleth over some. Let me ask you something. Do you fit into that all? Do you fit into that all? I want to tell you something. The devil and his angels fit into that all. He ruleth over all. The devil and his angels, you, the clowns downtown who think they run everything. Amen. Amen. He's ruling it all. Every bit of it. Praise God. Now, <clears throat> listen to the rest. Bless the Lord, ye his angels. What are you talking about? I'm talking about heaven. I'm talking about the heavenly host. Really, I'm talking about the kingdom of heaven. Young Brother Nance says, Brother Elder, I can tell by the way you preach, you believe there is a difference between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. I said, definitely. I'm talking to you about the kingdom of heaven now. But we are in the kingdom of God. In the kingdom of heaven, the Lord ruleth the angels that excel in strength. Somebody says angels aren't very tough. One angel could kill 40,000. That's tougher than most of the fellows I ever ran around with. It was about eight or ten big thuds going to whip up on Brother G.T. Haywood one night. And the Lord told Brother Haywood, send everybody home. He sent everybody home. They sent him a message. It's hard to preach like that. I've gotten messages somewhat like that, not quite exactly, but very upsetting notes while I was preaching. Somebody made sure they got me one right before I started preaching. And it's hard to preach like that, but the Lord helps us preachers anyhow. This particular note said, just as soon as church is over, we're going to beat you to a pulp. We're going to teach you not to mess around with our relatives and get them in church and save like that. And there's eight or ten of those big thuds out there waiting on him. He sent everybody home, and then he went out to meet them that night by himself. And he walked right down through the middle of them, and not one of them said one thing to him or done anything to him. And some of their buddies that knew they was going to whip up on the preacher said, How's come you didn't whip up on him and tear him up like you told him you was going to? And they said, they even told their friends in the world, said, You won't believe it. But when he come walking at us, there was a man walking in front of him that was nine feet tall or more. Hallelujah. So we wasn't about to mess with him because he looked like he could whip every one of us real easy. One angel can whip thousands. They excel. They excel in strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They are mightier than we. And they are much holier than we because we're not afraid to murmur and talk about each other, but they are. They said, the Bible said, they durst not bring such a railing accusation. Amen. They don't only excel in the strength of the physical strength, they excel in the strength of holiness and of morality. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. How many of you are here this morning? Am I preaching something that's upsetting you this morning? 
Praise God. Jesus said, when you pray, how many of you believe you ought to pray? He said, when you pray, say, thy kingdom come as in heaven, so be it in earth. What are you saying then? Lord, teach me not to be a rebel. but to be holy and subjective to you, your word, your spirit, your power. How many of you want to bring yourself into subjection to the Holy Ghost, to the spirit and the power of God? He said, Bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, Hearkening unto the voice of his words. When he speaks to us, it ought not to be, God, you wait later. It ought not to be, God, I'll put you in my schedule and we'll work you in. The angels do not work God in to their schedule, but when he speaks, they go. And when he speaks, they come. They are at the bidding of his word. You would like for things to go better at the house. Then it's best to bring the house and the household into subjection to God and the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the reason why every once in a while I say I'm like Joshua. This is not... You know, Marcia, she don't live in my house no more. She lives in her husband's house. Hallelujah. She's got to do what he tells her to do. And you can ask her. She comes running over and says, Greg says this. Greg this. Greg, Greg, Greg. It don't always go real well for her. Because she's married. She's over at Greg's house because he's her husband. She's not home no more. Hallelujah. And I'm going to tell you something this morning. I'm like Joshua. I'm not going to say I'm going to live for God. And I'm going to say, as for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. Dear brother, that means you are going to have, through the mind of Christ, keep your wife thinking right. Because that's your responsibility, mister. You are going to have to keep your children thinking right. Because that's your responsibility, mister. Hallelujah. And if you ever get tired of your responsibility, your house will fall apart and your kingdom will fall apart. Amen. I don't think the way to get her lined up is with the two before. You might ought to try some love. Love covereth a multitude of sins. Amen. Praise God. You show somebody you appreciate them, you'll get a whole lot more out of them than you will clubbing them to death. Praise God. I know one feller, him and his wife fights all the time. I've only known them about 18 years. And in 18 years, I've only known them to fight each other all the time. And if anybody would like to know why they fight each other all the time, I have watched that woman cook, and she is a marvelous cook. And I have watched her cook him some of the most fantastic meals. And he sits down, and there's something wrong with this. And there's something wrong with that. 
and this ain't this and that's this and that. And when he gets up and walks off, and I, all the time I've ever known him, been around him, been around him and her, I've never heard him say, thank you. He's too much of a man to tell a woman, thank you. Mine had to go preach to a bunch of women this week. I told her before she went, I said, you tell them you got lots of spice left, kid. Encouraging her. Praise God. I want her to think she can do the job because she can. Amen. It would be wonderful if once in a while we encouraged our wives, made them believe they could do the job. Hello. And it goes the other way too. Mine pats me on the knee every once in a while and says, I know you'll get it done. Hallelujah. Praise God. What are you doing? We're encouraging one another. What are you doing? We're keeping this kingdom intact. Hallelujah. 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 We need to get down and pray and say, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. And if we get ourselves into subjection to the Holy Ghost, we'll be like heaven. When he speaks, we'll be ready to go. When he speaks to go, we'll go. When he speaks to come, we will come. When he speaks for us to set before him, we will set before him in the presence of our God. When he sends us on a mission, we will go on that mission. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. And we ought to take only the message he gives us. Amen. Some folk go in the message sometime of the Holy Ghost. And when they get there, they feel so anointed, they preach for an hour after the anointing's left. And the message is over. And now it's not the kingdom of God anymore, but it's my kingdom. Hello. Hello, 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 hello. Anybody out there? Praise God. Praise God. He said here, Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his that do his pleasures. Come on. Amen. Bless ye the Lord, all ye hosts. What are you saying when you say, Bless ye the Lord. Praise Him for the good times. Praise Him for the bad times. Praise Him all times. Praise Him at all times. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. He said for us to praise Him in all things. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to praise Him. Why? The Lord sent me on this. Oh, you all know the horrible things that happened to me today. Come on now. If God sent you on that mission, why is it so horrible? Well, it's a trial in my life. <laughs> Just another little valley. I come through it when I pray. Looks like a canyon right now, Sister Diane, but it's just another little valley. I 
come through it when I pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. And all His works. And all His works. Y'all are all blessed anyhow. Oh yeah, you're all blessed. Sister Elder and I were driving to Colorado the other night. And I was just bored. You ever drive between here and Colorado Springs? But when you get out to... Uh, Syracuse, there's just so much to see between Syracuse and Lahana that my girls normally go to sleep. And it's the funniest thing, though, about that place out there. You can turn on your radio and get Africa and Hong Kong and New York and L.A. and I believe everything zeroes in out there. Maybe it's crossing the world out there in the middle of nothing so that it can get to where something's at. Hallelujah. And so my wife hit the little thing and it got Cincinnati, Ohio. And since her brother lives in Cincinnati, Ohio, and her uncle lives in Cincinnati, Ohio, and several others of her relatives live in Cincinnati, Ohio. We started paying real close attention because five tornadoes had just ripped up the city. Stacked 50-some airplanes up on the runway like toys, all messed up. We listened to people that was frightened that night calling in. Said they seen whole roofs of downtown buildings come off and land up against their houses and knock the roof off of their houses. One man said, I seen my car jump up in the air and spin around and said, slammed into a telephone pole and bounced up in the air and the roof off a building downtown fell on the ground underneath it and it fell on the roof and another roof blew on top of my car. Scared, them people scared to death, not even knowing there's a mighty God in the heavens that can mess with you like you've never been messed with. Can make cars and airplanes and buildings like they're toys. Destroy them in a moment of time as though it's nothing to him. Amen. Amen. But all of you are blessed, and so are we, because Uncle Clifford and Aunt Marg, as far as we know, didn't lose nothing. But it went walking right up through Hamilton County, right where they live at. <clears throat> Amen. And compared to our little hailstones, that wasn't nothing. Amen. Did you ever try putting roofs on six and seven story buildings? They said it took stories out in between stories and let the roof down. Y'all try fixing that kind of building back up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's like they said it looked like a huge hand reached over there and picked the roof up and took two or three stories out and then put the roof back down. Hallelujah. I'm serving a mighty God this morning. I'm serving a powerful God this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. They said if there's a God where he's at, he's all around you, bud. The only problem is you're so hard-hearted, stiff-necked, stupid, and rebellious that you wouldn't know God if he was standing in front of you talking to you. 
Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm glad this morning I know who him. He said for us to bless the Lord. All his works. Bless the Lord and all of his works. I just wonder if the church up against the rapture can bless the Lord and all of his works. Can you bless the Lord and all of his works? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's turn to, I, these are not in my notes. I'm just preaching this way this morning. But let's turn to Matthew, the 24th chapter. Matthew, the 24th chapter. Can you bless the Lord in all of his works? Matthew 24 and 4. This is right before the coming of Jesus Christ. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. You're hearing all kinds of rumors today about Christ. I learned something while I was gone this week that I didn't know. The Moonies have really got smart. And now they're coming to you with cause of this and cause of that. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and a lot of these cause of programs is none other than the Moonies. Learned how to make millions and billions more money and people are getting wrapped up like mad in it and supporting Siam Moon to who don't know it. He's one of the false Christ. He claims to be Jesus Christ today. He does. Amen. And there's lots of others, but there's the real Ani Christ coming on the scene now. You say, well, where will he come from, Brother Elder? Out of the Middle East. He will come from where the true Messiah came from. Making the whole world believe he is true Messiah. For many shall come in my name saying I am Christ and shall deceive. This ought to say millions instead of many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of war. Are you hearing of any rumors of war today? It's plum spooky, huh, brother? Uh, Brian, knowing that tomorrow you might be getting your greetings and salutations. So, well, we don't have no draft. It only takes 24 hours. In 24 hours, this nation could have the draft rolling again. Fact is, the boys, when they hit 18, have to register anyhow so they know where they're at. So just as soon as they can get them and need them, they can get them. Amen. Amen. They'll even be taking the one-legged ones in this next one. Go in there and say, well, I only got one eye. That's all right. If it's your right eye, you can shoot down through this barrel with it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. And you don't have to worry about the dumb ones. They send them out first to find out what the enemy's going to do, and then they send the smart ones behind them. So being dumb won't get you out of it either. In fact, just some of the dumbest people I ever met was in the Army. Amen. Praise God. <clears throat> and some of the smartest ones I ever met was in the Army. Praise God. And there are going to be wars and rumors of wars. Korea is a seething pot right now. Wonder what could happen. But I'm not near as worried about Korea as I am the Middle East. And if President Reagan don't get this Contra thing through to where them guys fight it, then you boys can go down there and fight it. So we'd be ten times smarter to send them the money to fight it than we would to send you boys to fight it. Amen. I'm for that 100%. Because I don't want Paul down there in the mess. Amen. Praise God. Especially since we don't fight wars to win anymore. Amen. But, <clears throat> you see... 
wars and rumors of wars. If we got things straightened out in Nicaragua, things would only be straightened out for a couple weeks. And there's that other place. The Philippines is a seething pot. Reagan's already said we will not let our bases go there. We will send in the Marines if we have to. There's the Middle East that's calling for our ships and planes every day. What are you talking about, Brother Elder, in the midst of all this? Are you living in the kingdom of God? In the midst of these false crises running around saying I'm this and I'm that, has the kingdom of God got control of you and your mind and your heart? And it's even going to get worse. He said, You shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. I want to tell you that one verse there ought to be showing some folks that Jesus Christ is coming very quickly. Reuben and Sister Maji told me that there is ten times more damage in Mexico City than ever was reported in our papers. They told us 5,000 people perished down there, but Reuben and Maji went down there and said somewhere between 75,000 and 100,000 people lost their lives there. The city is a total ruin and never will be rebuilt. over a five minute earthquake when God gets to moving it don't take long it don't take long when God gets to moving they dug them people out of the mud down there in South America when that volcano blew her top. Just a few years ago in Nicaragua, in that earthquake, they had two whole cities disappear. Never have found nobody, no trace of them. And one city was a city population of over 20,000 people. Not one person has been located nothing about the city the earth just opened it up and swallowed it all but it didn't happen here no use to get excited about it here but there was one just three weeks ago that went rumbling right down through the middle of the United States got some people over there shook up not any out here, but it got them shook up. And the Bible said, you're going to hear of all these earthquakes. The Bible said in the last days, men's hearts failing them for fear. You know why the kids are punk rocking and doing all the stuff they're doing? Because they don't believe they've got any future anyhow. And they're going to get it all. They can get it right now.
two men going to marry each other in a church house. And I'm wondering what kind, what kind of a minister is going to marry them. It's no wonder that when you see pictures of the mark of the 666 that they have the table here. Do this in remembrance of me. And while they're standing in the church house in line, they're putting the mark of the beast on the people's heads in front of the table that says, do this in remembrance of me. We seen people yesterday with marks on their faces where they've been marking them somewhere in this city yesterday. I told my wife they're getting people used to it, getting them ready so they won't think a thing about sticking it right in their forehead. Wearing these broken hearts on the side of their faces and true loves in their foreheads. Just getting the people ready for the mark. Don't think nothing about tattooing your face, woman, because we're fixing to tattoo it anyhow. Amen. And men's hearts failing them for fear. But I want to tell you something in the church. We ought to have peace and joy and righteousness. We ought to be walking in the spirit of God. We ought to be coming to church. We ought not to be fighting whether we ought to put our hair up or down. We ought not to be fighting whether we ought to wear these kind of clothes or that kind of clothes. We ought to rejoice in the Lord that he has cleansed us and made us whole and clean and took us out of all that trash. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm in the kingdom of God and praise his, bless his holy name. Oh, it's wonderful. Hallelujah. Just to walk in the presence of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Just walk in the presence and the peace and the holiness of God. Praise God. Where do you get that? In prayer. In prayer is where it comes from. Lord, put me in the same spirit in this earth that your angels and you have in heaven. Folks sleep through this. I feel sorry for them. Tomorrow they'll need it. Sleeping on their way to hell. For nation shall rise against nation. Famines, pestilence. Whether you know it or not, the rainforest hasn't had rain in 12 years. It's becoming a desert. That which used to be nothing but watered substance. It's becoming a desert. People are dying by the thousands over there. Starvation. The African farmers plow their fields every day hoping it'll rain. Nothing comes. For 12 years, the rainforest won't give forth. But it's all right over here. And let me tell you what my, our missionaries that's hanging up on the wall back here said. You know why they're starving to death, Brother Elder? They don't even know what they're telling me. They're just telling me something and they don't know that if I told this much in Kansas, I'd get in more trouble than I could get out of. I said, no, why are they starving to death like that over there? They said, because your country, our country, keeps shipping them wheat. And Africans don't eat wheat. Africans eat rice. And said they can't get used to wheat. They don't know what to do with the wheat. They can't cook the wheat. So they're dying by the millions over there. And their government's taking our wheat and returning it and selling it to other countries. And their palaces are full of meat. And their palaces are full of everything while their people starve to death. Good example of that's Marcos. Good example of that is of that guy just got kicked out in Hades. The people starving to death while they're living in mink furs and eating the greatest of meats and drinking the finest of wines and wearing the purest of silks. 
Amen. Amen. And Jesus said all these things are going to happen right at the coming of the Lord. All these things. He said all these are the beginning of sorrows. But where does that leave the church at? Where does that leave the church at? Running, shaking, fearing, quaking? Shouldn't. Should leave the church bowing up in the power of God. It's Stronger and stronger in the Holy Ghost. As he comes upon us like a dark cloud that would destroy. The church ought to be on its knees praying and getting stronger. Praying and living in God's spirit and in God's power. I wrote some of these things down. We are natural rebellers. Natural rebellers. So why should we pray every day? So that we can bring ourselves into subjection to God. It is natural that we rebel. One thing I would never allow my children to do that I see them do all the time anymore. One of the first things your children will learn, and if you think it's funny, you've had it. And one of the first things they'll do is smack back at you and say no. And if you think that's funny, you've had it. When mine smacked back at me and said no, and these little tiny things, I smacked their hands and I said, don't you do that no more. I taught them one thing. They never tell me no. Little, big, tall, skinny, fat, short. Amen. Amen. I am the boss in that house. No kid tells me no. So they're only three months old. That's when it starts. Amen. I didn't say take a belt and kill the kid. There's a lot of difference between smacking his little hand saying, don't you do that no more. Amen. Don't have to knock its fingers off. Just pat it on the hand. A little baby, you hit a little baby, just a good little pat, and then you think you killed it, so. Amen. Hallelujah. I often thought about being a baby looking at all those big human beings around there. I imagine that's spooky anyhow. So. Praise God. Hallelujah. Can you imagine some big person like that picking on you? Man, Sister Kim, you know, little old tinky baby looks at you and me. Talk about giants in the land. Hallelujah. Praise God to say, yes, ma'am, yes, sir, whatever. Praise God. Hallelujah. Somebody that big picking on you, you wouldn't fight back either. And that's right. Just teach them. Just teach them. Praise God. Praise God. The kingdom of God is an inner kingdom. And here we go. You can't get there if you don't pray. It's an inner kingdom. It's not an outside kingdom. It's not an external kingdom. It's an inner kingdom that ministers to you. And it only comes by prayer. So why I shout and I dance and I worship? You can get a little bit of it that way. But you will not ever get it like prayer. And there's a lot to be said about shouting, dancing, and worshiping too. That's another way of bringing yourself into the subjection to the kingdom of heaven. A lot of folks won't worship because they're of their physique, of their external being, of how somebody looks at me. And they're more concerned about how somebody looks at me than they are about how God's looking at me. But when you get more concerned about how God's looking at you than you are about how somebody else is looking at you, you can never more turn loose and worship Him. Hallelujah. It's an inner kingdom. It's a moral kingdom. God is moral. God doesn't lie. Steal and cheat. Devise evil things. 
God doesn't run naked and commit sex crimes. He doesn't violate his own laws. Amen. Amen. So when you're praying, God is going to make you holy. If you're entering into the kingdom of God, you don't need a pastor standing there beating you on top of the head to be moral, to be holy. There is a holy God making you clean inside, changing your heart, changing your life, changing your mind, rearranging you. What's he doing all this to you for? Because he's fixing to get you to walk on streets of gold in a holy heaven, in a moral house. Did you ever stop to think where you're going at? It's got to be done here because up there, there is no policeman. Up there, there is no mayor. Up there, there is nobody keeping the law. Up there, we have all performed. We have all prove to him we could do it down here and so we're going to get a go up there there's not going to be no prison up there brother Mark you either get your house in order here or you don't go there amen, amen. what are you preaching on the kingdom of God as it is in heaven so be it on earth yes, sir. speak Lord for thy servant heareth clean up my mind clean up my heart Clean up my pathway. Cause me to walk in the ways of righteousness. Cause me to understand your ways, God. I just wonder how many of you in here want to understand his ways. How many of you want to understand his way? When you get to where you want to understand his way, you don't need a big bad preacher beating and pounding on you. You want to walk in the fear of God. The beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. That fear don't just exactly mean being totally afraid of him, and yet you ought to be, but it means in reverence and respect. Oh, Lord, let me stand in a holy place, Lord. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. Oh, God, let me be that, Lord, what you have caused me to come into the church to be. Hello. It's a moral. It's an eternal might. Ooh, I, this is one thing I like about serving God. You see, if you would allow me to teach this Bible lesson for one more hour and a half, I'll get it out. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Some of you have slept for the first hour. You ought to be fresh this second hour. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, listen to this now. You know, Brother Brian, you're doing pretty good. You've been awake all morning. And that's unusual for Brother Brian to stay awake much before noon. But he does good on Sunday morning. Praise God. Other folks just coming here that think it's time to go to bed. There's that eternal might. That's what I want, that eternal might. Somehow or another, I'd like to be something like Jesus. Somehow or another, I'd like to be a lot like Jesus. Somehow or another, I'd like to be a whole lot like the Apostle Paul and like the Apostle Peter. When I rebuke devils, they either flee or they come out. When I lay my hands on the sick, they get healed. Amen. When I show the sinner is there, he's converted of his way. Where do you get all that at, Brother Elder? Boy, Brother Elder, why don't you tell us where do you get all that? Out of the book and on my knees. Give us this day our daily bread.
bread. Give me this day, God, daily bread. Daily bread. Why do you need daily bread? Because yesterday I was working with this woman who needs to be healed. But today I'm working with this man who needs to get over the air of this sin in his life. And I can't take what I got yesterday and apply it today. So send me fresh bread today from heaven. Give me this day daily bread. Give me this day to be like Jesus. To be like Jesus. Master, I need you. I'm sorry, but I got to go pray. Why? Because I've got to bring myself into heaven. I've got to bring myself under subjection to heaven. I came here not to do my will, but the will of my Father. He's the one that runs heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so I've got to bring myself in line with heaven today so that while I'm on earth, I, I can do in earth as it is done in heaven. And the things of this world will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory. I just seem to have so much trouble with the things in the world, Brother Elder. It's because you're living in your kingdom. You're living in the kingdom of this world. But when you begin to live in the kingdom of God, the things of this world get strangely dim as His power begins to pick up in your life, as His reign begins to pick up in your life, as His desires begin to pick up in your life those things begin to fade out of your life. They begin to be lesser value as these become greater value. Through prayer, His kingdom comes in our lives through prayer, his kingdom comes in our lives until one day it's glorious eternity. Just step off of this globe into that bright new world. Because it was first his kingdom here, so now it's his kingdom forever there. Hallelujah. The good influences of his kingdom, I don't have time to preach on these things. The good influences of his kingdom bring security to us. To preach on these things, I would now have to open up the book of Acts and start showing you the illustrations of them. I'd have to show you the ministry and the life of Jesus Christ and show you the illustrations and the ministry of them. And yet they are of effect and they are a reality and they live in our lives today. There are some things that God has done in our lives because we prayed that should make us to know He is real, live, living, real God sitting on the throne, ruling the heavens and the earth that should bring us into sincerity, which was none other than the wonderful influences of God's throne. Which should make us live to God in sincerity. Amen. In encouragement, 
should bring consecration. We have prayed, and God has answered our prayers. If you'd be honest with yourself, you would say, God has answered my prayers. But I have prayed some prayers God hasn't answered, Brother Elder. There are some reasons you need to pray some more to find out what God wants out of you. Then he will answer your prayers. As you meet his conditions, he'll overly abundant supply your blessings. Amen. Amen. Praise God. He'll send you encouragement should none other than cause you consecration. I stand in awe when I see the hand of God in my life. Yesterday, Sister Elder and I were going through Salina. We know the old places down there we lived at. You know, Tom, we used to run that stupid old pawn shop out there on Broadway all the time. And I seen that pawn shop yesterday. So I pulled in there with my Lincoln Town car. And everybody took one look at my Lincoln Town car and said, boy, this dude's going to buy us out. He's got the dough. They know when you pull up in that car, you got the money. They didn't know that we had just enough to get home. Praise God. But it was just an old slop pole I used to live in when I was in sin. But they had guns and ammunition and stuff in there that I used to get involved with when I was not saved. And so I thought I'd stop in there because I still like guns. And I still like ammunition. I like shooting guns. I like shooting a pistol. And uh, so, boy, that's scary to me. You know, it's so scary to me, I'm shooting another round or two. Praise God. <clears throat> I walked in there and I looked around, walked around, and looked at things. Man, I lost. I couldn't believe it. No wonder I always lived in poverty. They had a cassette tape recorder in there about that long. They wanted $57 for it. And they got them on sale, just like them at Walmart this week, for $40. They had another cassette recorder in there about this long, and they wanted $24 for it. And I seen them over at Walmart for $30. $6 below brand new cost. No guarantees that it works or nothing. Walk out, you're stuck. I went over and looked at some 357 Magnums and some 38s. And uh, my boys got a 38 chrome 4-inch barrel just like they had laying there. And they wanted $239 for one. I looked at the wife and I said, Paul gave 150 for his. And I used to live in that slop hole all the time taking my horn in there and pawing it and then paying through the nose to get it out. Brian don't know anything I'm talking about. I turned around looked at my wife and she was already feeling like I was feeling and she was looking at me and she said, are you going to buy something, honey? I said, you kidding? I said, this ain't nothing but a junk hole. I said, do you know something? She said, what? I said, I'm glad I stopped and walked through this hole today. She said, why? I said, God just wanted to remember, wanted me to remember how far he's brought me out. There's heights in living in the kingdom of God you ain't met yet, but if you get in it, you'd find out God can do more for you here on earth than you ever could help yourself. Amen. I 
I'm glad every once in a while that I go down around these places I pulled up to bug heaven one day. So where's that at, Brother Elder? It's over on East 5th Street in Salina, Kansas. We used to have some folks that lived on the other side of us in the apartment. And uh, they'd chase all their bugs over to us. And then I'd fumigate the place and chase them all over to them. And then they'd fumigate the place and chase them all over to us. And we just traded bugs back and forth. Raised Marcia and Jeffrey and Polly in one bedroom, living room, and a tiny little cracker nut kitchen. All the floors were, lino were linoleum. I'm not saying nothing because I know some of you live that way today. And everybody knows brother and sister elders rich. I walked out last night and said, how are you rich people doing tonight? You know, I am rich. My God owns all of it. And I just keep drawing off of his account. Hallelujah. I've learned that seek ye first the kingdom of God is the answer. Some folks say, Brother Elder, don't know nothing about living like this. I'll tell you, little dear ones, I've lived on macaroni and cheese till I was glad we changed over to eggs. But I'll tell you one thing, I got so sick when we was living on eggs, I was thrilled to death when we changed over to fried potatoes. So whatever happened to beans, well, that was almost every night, you know. But, I mean, we got lucky and run some fried potatoes in between them. And I was working in a steel mill 12 hours a day living on macaroni and cheese. I knew I was either going to turn into macaroni or cheese on the two. Hallelujah. How many of you would like to get out of the mess you're in? When you come to church, why don't you praise him for what he's done for you? Huh? Why don't you begin to thank God for everything he's done to you and for you? If he can't get you out, who is going to get you out? I said, if he can't get you out, who's going to get you out? But he's not going to get you out of that because you just desire to get out of that. You know how he's going to get you out? Because you desire his kingdom more than you do your kingdom. And because you learn his kingdom, you automatically get out of something you didn't know how to get out of. Hallelujah. He begins to teach you his ways. And as he begins to teach you his ways, you begin to live a different way. And as you begin to live a different way, you begin to live a better way. Amen. I look back at the money I've had and it's a shame what I did with it. I should own houses and yachts and things instead of all the junk I own. Well, what are you going to do now, Brother Elder? I'm going to live for God. And I don't want to be rich. I really don't. If God would give me a lot of money, I'd just give it back to Him. Amen. Because I'd rather learn to lean on His everlasting arm than I would a dollar bill any day of the week. I'd rather look unto Him to supply my needs than I would unto men. Amen. 
Some of you don't know how well off you are. And whenever you, if God ever brings you to some heights, I pray you won't be destroyed in them. But you'll learn to know one thing. Some of the things that we look down on are the most precious things in our lives. Amen. Amen. They're the most stable things in your life. They're the greatest times of strength and blessing to you that you have ever faced in your entire life. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I can't finish this this morning. It's unfinishable. Hallelujah. I just have to stop in the middle of it and maybe pick up somewhere sometime. Praise God. Praise God. I wonder how many of you want God's kingdom in your life more than you do anything else. Say, well, I don't understand, Brother Elder. After all the teaching I've done this morning, you ought to be able to get down and say, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. You ought to say, oh, God, cause my life on earth to be in total subjection to you. Lord, cause your word, Lord God, to be effective in my life. Lord, cause my life to line up to the plumb line, to the plumb line. If this Bible says you have to repent, you have to repent. If this Bible says you've got to be baptized in Jesus' name to have remission of sin, you have to. If this Bible says you have to speak in tongues to be born again, you have to. If this Bible says you have to live a holy life you have to if this Bible said subject yourselves one to another you have to if this Bible says that in the kingdom of men in the kingdom of flesh is lying, cheating, stealing jealousy, variance and all that stuff you got to get yourself out of that and get in the kingdom of God get in the kingdom of God get in the kingdom of God Lord, not my will, but thy will be done in my life. Thy kingdom come in my life in this earth as it is in heaven. Just because I'm down here and I live over here on so-and-so street, I can do as I please. No, 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 honey. That's not your address. That's your temporary dwelling place. Your final address, you might ought to find out where it's at. Amen. Amen. You might ought to find out where you're going to spend eternity, which is a hundred times longer than you'll ever live on this earth. You know, the older you get, the funnier life gets, Brother Grubbs. Somebody said something to me yesterday morning. Said, we've been married 30 years. She said, Do you know that I've been married twice as long as I was single? Some of you little darlings, it's word to death about being single. Don't worry. When you get hitched up, it'll be so long you wondered why you was ever worried about being free. Somebody said to me this week, Brother Elder, how long you been married? I said, all my life. Praise God. Praise God. We worry about the silliest things. I said, we worry about the dumbest things. And the most important things we don't worry about. We don't stay awake over the most important thing. How long have you lived at your present address? But your final address. I'm not talking about your temporary address. I'm talking about your permanent address. stand this morning. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I wonder if you need God to help you this morning, if you could cry out to Him this morning. Hallelujah, God, this day, oh God, what will it take in this day, Lord, to get a hold of men's hearts? Lord, to shake them and stir them, oh God, inside. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. My God, 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 my God. Lord, we need you. We need you, Lord, we need you this day, oh God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah